Hey everybody, have you heard that Windows Virtual Desktop is now generally available? In this critical update, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it. So Windows Virtual Desktop was released to GA in July of 2020. Now this is known as the Windows Virtual Desktop. It was previously known as Windows Virtual Desktop 2020 Spring Update. And that was a mouthful, but we had to differentiate between the previous version, which was known as the fall 2019 release of Windows Virtual Desktop. That fall 2019 release is now known as the Windows Virtual Desktop Classic, and the 2020 spring update is simply Windows Virtual Desktop. Thank you, Microsoft, for simplifying that for us. Now, what's the big deal about this new Windows Virtual Desktop that just went generally available? Uh, first of all, it's Azure Resource Manager based. It's ARM based. And that means we can manage all of our different Windows Virtual Desktop objects, our hosts, our pools, our workspaces, our users, all of that can be managed just like any other ARM based object up in Azure. It's going to simplify things a lot. All right. Also, we have Azure Portal integration with the new Windows Virtual Desktop. This is fantastic news. In the Windows Virtual Desktop Classic, we had to do a lot of things through PowerShell, uh, third-party tools possibly, or separate web apps outside of our Azure tenant. And this made it a little more difficult to work with. Now, with the Windows Virtual Desktop, we have everything handled right through the Azure portal. It's extremely easy to work with, honestly. Uh, it's a lot of using templates, right? ARM templates to create these resources, deploy these resources. Uh, it couldn't be easier. So it's fantastic integration with that Azure portal. It's also another advantage of being ARM-based is we get to use our Azure role-based access control. This is very nice because it gives me the flexibility and the customization that I need to control access to the different Windows Virtual Desktop objects. With the Windows Virtual Desktop Classic, we were limited to four roles that we could use, uh, and these were applied at the tenant or the host level. With the new Windows Virtual Desktop, I can leverage that Azure RBAC, and I can apply and control access to individual objects within my Windows Virtual Desktop environment. Very nice. User management, another big improvement when we went to the ARM-based version of Windows Virtual Desktop. In that Windows Virtual Desktop Classic, we were limited to assigning access to Windows Virtual Desktop to individual user accounts. Now, this was okay in test environments, but not very good when we started moving into production environments and hundreds or thousands of users that we needed to assign access to. Doing that individually was an administrative nightmare. Now, with the Windows Virtual Desktop, we can use our Azure Active Directory groups to assign access. Fantastic stuff. Monitoring has also become much easier, and this is a, a big improvement. In the previous version, in that classic version, monitoring was limited to some stuff we could do through PowerShell, and there was a separate web application that we could use outside of the Azure portal uh, to monitor somewhat our Windows Virtual Desktop environment. Now it's all done through the Azure portal, and we can leverage our Azure or our log analytics workspaces. So we can gather up information about our Windows Virtual Desktop environment in that log space or that, that workspace, and then we can use our Custo queries. We can use to, to, to pull back information about our Windows Virtual Desktop environment. We can even use things like Power BI to create visual representations of our Windows Virtual Desktop environment and how things are running. So very nice improvement there. And lastly, another big change with the Windows Virtual Desktop is we now have integrated AV redirect for Microsoft Teams. Now, one of the big problems we have when we're running Windows Virtual Desktop, or had, I should say, you know, was the fact that we're using this for our remote workers and they were wanting to do Microsoft Teams calls, right, to communicate with each other. And the workload that that was putting on those virtual desktops, a little too much, right? We would get a little choppy graphics, audio, things like that. With the AV redirect, the audio visual for our Microsoft Team calls it's going to be handled through the local client. So we no longer have that workload on the virtual desktops. It makes for a much smoother experience with Microsoft Teams. I've seen it in action. It works great. You wouldn't know you were sitting at a virtual desktop in your Microsoft Teams call. So these are just a few of the things that have been improved upon, the advantages we can get when we work with the Windows Virtual Desktop. One thing to keep in mind, if you're using, if you had set your environment up with the Windows Virtual Desktop, classic, right? The fall 2019 release. These are, are not the same. So 
Microsoft has promised we're going to get the ability to migrate that information from the 2019 up to the 2020, or you can simply start over with 2020, uh, or the new Windows Virtual Desktop. Now, if you want more information about Windows Virtual Desktop, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out some of the other videos I've done. You can also head over to IT Pro TV, where I've got a hands-on series going through setting up and deploying a Windows Virtual Desktop environment. We also have an upcoming webinar on the topic as well. Check out the playlist for more critical updates. Thanks for watching.